Praise God. Praise God. Can somebody give the Lord a shout in the house? Awesome. Awesome. How are we all today? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to church. Can you look to your left and to your right and tell your neighbor, I'm glad you could make it into God's presence. Let them hear it. Let them hear you say it. Awesome. Awesome. All right, please, can we be upstanding as we take the few next minutes to pray? Can we begin to thank the Lord? Can you open your mouth and thank him from your heart? You know, there's a saying that goes, you know, that um, he that thinks, you know, can thank God well. Can you thank him for all that he has done, for all that he is to you? Thank him for where he picked you up from, for where you are now, and for where he's taking you to. I want you to open up your mouth and thank him from your lips to his heart tonight. In the name of Jesus, can you thank him? I can't hear thankful people in the house. Kaba, kaba, rondesh. In your understanding and in the language of the Holy Ghost, I want you to lift up thanksgiving. Thank him for life. Thank him for your job. Thank him for all the things that he has done. For the things that he is doing. Even the things that he is yet to do. That he's working behind the curtains. Behind the scenes. Can you thank him? Oh, kaba, kaba, labadashta. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I want you to thank him for yourself. Thank him that you are a child of God. The Bible says that what manner of love has the Father lavished on us that we should be called what? The sons of God. And this is who we are. Thank him for the gift of the Holy Ghost. By reason of the Holy Spirit, you can call God Abba Father. The unbeliever can know, call him as God. They know him as God. But to him, to you, he is your Father. Can you thank him? For in Jesus' name, Ooh, glory to God. How many of you understand that you can come to God's presence and you can become familiar with His presence? And the truth is, whatever you are familiar with, you will not be blessed by it. Do you understand? Every time you come into God's presence, you must come with the heart of what? Of a child. A child that is what is willing to receive from him afresh. Do you understand? So whatever it is that you know of God, whatever it is that you've come to understand of God in time past, can you put it aside and say, Lord, I come to you afresh like a child. I put aside all of those things that I think I know of you. I want to encounter you afresh. Can you begin to lift up your voice and make this desire known? I am a what hunger and thirst after righteousness let me tell you one thing hunger does your hunger places a demand on the anointing do you understand your hunger places a demand on the anointing on the person that is ministering can you tell the lord i come with the heart of hunger i come with the heart that is devoid of anything i want to receive of you afresh oh gaparata can you begin to lift up your voices god has a word for somebody in the house tonight Ashaka Branta, that word that will take you from where you are to where you need to be can you lift up your voice Iyaleba Boradasha Rete Branta Kedele Maria Reto Branto Padasha Esemenendo Akapai Ay Kopeleya Ay Kopeleya Ishwakata Touch me at the point of my need Send forth your word and shift me from where I am to the place that I need to be Ashigata Marate and so Father, we thank you. We thank you because this and many more you will do for us. And so we declare this service open in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this evening? Come on, if you're excited, can you just put your hands like this? Wave your hands like you really made it. All right, can you just give your neighbor an high five? Say, neighbor, you're looking beautiful. You're looking handsome. I can see the glory of the Lord around you. Hallelujah. Are you ready to praise the name of the Lord? Yeah. Come on, I can hear you. Are you ready to praise the name of the Lord? Come on.
Amen. You're welcome to church. Please, uh, don't sit down now. Why are you in a hurry? Please turn to your neighbor. Pay them a compliment. Tell them they look nice. Tell them they smell nice. Give them a hug. Give them a high five. Thank you very much. You're welcome to church. You may please be seated in the house of God. Hallelujah. You're welcome to church. And if you're joining us online, you're welcome. We hope that this service would impact you and it will minister to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We are having our family and friends Sunday next week, Sunday. I hope someone is excited. All right. Amazing. So we're inviting our friends, our family to church to be a part of the family and friends Thanksgiving service on the 21st of April. And don't worry about parking. We have our excess car park and excess parking for everyone that wants to come to church. So please invite your friends. Carpool if you want to. Let them hit a ride if they want to. Our car park is located at the Glam Car Park opposite Coliseum. And we have AC Field shuttle buses to bring you to church. So you don't have to worry about commuting to church from the car park. Hallelujah. All right, we are filling our members' database. We don't just want you to be a number in church. We want you to be a member of the church. So if you see this card that I'm holding, the ushers are going to give you one of it. So please fill in your details accurately so that we can have your details and we are always able to reach out to you and celebrate with you on your birthday. Or you can scan the barcode and please register your details accurately so that we can have your correct information. Hallelujah. Our spontaneous worship will be happening live on Friday at 11 p.m. Exactly. I thought somebody would be more excited than that. So our spontaneous worship is streaming live on all our social media platforms, YouTube and Instagram. And, uh, yeah, and Harvesters NG, Harvesters TV, and on Facebook. So please make sure that you invite someone to be a part of it. One thing about spontaneous worship is it inspires you to pray. And it inspires you to worship, you know, God in depths like never been before. So please set your reminders. This Friday, 11 p.m., we are having our spontaneous worship. Hallelujah. How many of us have started inviting our friends for next level? Next level conference. If you know you've invited someone, let me hear you say hi. Amazing. What a church. Thank you so much. Our next level prayer conference in London is holding on the 4th of May at the Oval Arena in Wembley Stadium. Um, I mean, we are sold out. Glory to God. But we have opened up a wait list. Hallelujah. So we've opened up the wait list so that your family and friends that are yet to register can please do so. So if you know that you have your friends that you're yet to invite, please and please, I'll oblige you to send them the flyers, send them the link so that they can register and be a part of this impactful, impactful service. In furtherance of the service, please fix your eyes on the screen for further announcements. Thank you. The times are tough. And, and there, there are too many, many things waiting desperately to steal our joy. The, the state, state of the economy, economy academic problems, problems, relationship heartbreaks, barrenness, marital challenges, and much more are trying to bring tears to your eyes. In this season, it is true that there's the overwhelming feeling of stress, anxiety, and depression, but you don't have to face them alone. At Harvesters, we understand the challenges you are facing. We've been there before, and we've seen the impact of a supportive voice at the end of the line. That's why we've established the Harvesters Supply. Psalm um, 35 verse 27, even as we kindly rise to our feet as we pray this evening. The book of Psalms chapter 35 verse 27. Psalms chapter 35, Psalm 35 verse 27 please. That can be up on the screen. Alright, it says, let them shout for joy and be glad. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout for joy. Hallelujah. So why should we shout for joy? He said, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yet let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified that has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Are there servants of God in the house? The Lord takes pleasure 
in your prosperity in this month of ease. We are going to be lifting up our voices and say, Father, I thank you because it pleases you that I prosper. I thank you because you are not intimidated by my prosperity. Why not lift up your voice and begin to thank a God that loves us so much that it pleases him. Father, we thank you for giving us prosperity in this month of ease, in this season of multiplication. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus for unbounded prosperity. Thank you because you take pleasure in our prosperity. In the second no more second day. Yes, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because indeed, it pleases you. It gives your heart joy to see your children prosper. To see your children advance. To see your children succeed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. How many of us know this is our bond of ease? Hallelujah. In the book of John chapter 10 verse 9. Please, if you can get John chapter 10 verse 9 quickly. John chapter 10 verse 9 just to show you that that word is from the Lord himself. John chapter 10 verse 9. If you can have that on the screen quickly, please. The book of John chapter 10 from verse 9. John chapter 10 verse 9. Okay, that is delaying and coming up. I'll just, okay, it's on the screen now. It says, this is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the door. If any man goes in or enters in by me, he shall be saved. And he shall go in and out and find green pastures. We are going to be decreeing. The, the Lord says that he, as you enter in by him, you shall be saved. Because you have received Jesus, you are saved. And as you go in and out every day, you go in and out through NLP, you go in and out, he said, you shall find green pastures. Begin to lift up your voice and say, my father, my father, I thank you. Because in every day of my life, I find green pastures. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. As I step out in your name, I find green pastures. In my career, in my business, in my finances, I find green pastures. I do not have to labor. I do not have to labor. The cause of the sweat of Adam is broken. I go in and out in the name of Jesus. And I find green pastures in my going in, green pastures in my coming out. In the name of Jesus. Green pastures in everything that I do, in everything I set my hands to do. no no I find green pastures without sweat, without labor, without toiling, without suffering. In the name of Jesus, no Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Matthew chapter 6, verse 32, he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things the nations shall, that are seeking after shall be added unto you. We are going to be praying for NLP now. NLP is our program. Say, this is my NLP. We are going to be praying for NLP conferences in the, in the UK, in Canada, in the US. We are going to be praying. In the book of John chapter 12, verse 32. John chapter 12, verse 32. Jesus speaking, he says, If I be lifted up from the earth. That's talking about his resurrection. He says, I will draw men unto himself. He said, If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men unto myself. I'm going to be praying. Let the Lord draw men from all walks of life in the UK. We are not having a conference for Nigerians in the UK. We are having a conference for all human race in the UK. And so we are decreeing, let the Lord draw men from all walks of life, from all race and religion, from all tribes, to NLP in the UK, to NLP in Canada, to NLP in the US. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the resurrection power of Christ, that you pull men from all walks of life to NLP in the name of Jesus. Let me 
verse 20 and he says and they went forth he's talking about the people of God he says they went forth and preached everywhere they went forth to the UK hallelujah and up he went forth to the US hallelujah and up he went forth to Lagos hallelujah and up he went forth to Ibadan hallelujah and up he went forth to Asia to Europe hallelujah and he says the Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following while decreeing that the Lord will confirm his word to Pastor Balaji to the NLP crew with signs and wonders following. There will be miracles, diverse kinds of miracles that men have never seen, that eyes have not seen. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, confirm your word even during the NLP conference with signs, wonders, with miracles, with healings, with breakthrough, with salvation, with turn around, with liberation. for the servant of God. The Bible says how God anointed, that's Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How God anointed Pastor Bolaji Idou and the pastors of Harvestas with the Holy Ghost and with power. We are asking that the Lord make his ministers fire in concerning these NLP conferences, that they will carry the fire of God, that they will walk in the literal, raw power of God in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you anoint your servants with the Holy Ghost, with fire, with power, with dunamis, the dynamic working power of God to work miracles, to work healing, to break chains, to bring breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for indeed you have anointed your servants. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for this is the confidence that we have in you. That if we ask anything according to your will, we know that you heard us. And the petitions that we have desired of you, they've been granted. Lord, we bless your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Somebody just speak the name of Jesus over your hand. It's okay to speak the name of Jesus over the finances. Over your life. Cheese. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, we thank you for the opportunity to come together to hear your word. I'm asking in the name of the Lord Jesus, as the word of God is taught, let illumination, let revelation fill and flood our hearts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Call him back. Call him back. Brother, brother, look at me. Look at me. None of you, once I climb here, should step out through that door again. Praise God. And I'm saying so because that's what you do. Praise God. Please, you can have your seats. Exodus chapter 18, verse 10. Exodus chapter 18, verse 10. I'm going to use that to start my preaching. Exodus chapter 18, verse 10. So I understand that during the service, Sunday service, because a lot of services, sometimes it can get tired and restless. And I understand that. But it's just midweek service. And the reason why is that the tendency for the devil to be here is very high. This department, very, very high. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because a lot of you never take time to sit down and hear the word of God. I've sent Ade and Darlington to certain people personally that I feel as if they are always absent. And the reason why is I want to just sing, just get your things and go away. And, and that's why I always come back and say, where's your notebook? Are you writing? Where's your notebook? Are you writing? Because the, the tendency is just high. But, that's, but let's look at something. Amen. Exodus. So I was expecting someone to leave and I kept my eyes there and the person left, just like I thought. Chapter 19, verse 10. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto Moses, go into the people. Chapter 19, verse 10. Go into the people, sanctify themselves, sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon the Mount of Sinai. So I want to say something here. I want to... This is not, this is part of something I plan to talk about today. Reverence. And it's not about the quiet, it's about all of us. When we come to the house of the Lord, one of the things that we need to cultivate is reverence. As simple as moving around. And it's not about quiet. Sometimes you just see someone literally eating during the service. That's not reverence. You know, if we are going to sense a stronger anointing and it's the Holy Spirit respond to honor. You understand what I'm talking about? So, it's going to start from not just the choir, the whole church. How do we honor the presence of God? How do we host the presence of God? And it's, it's a deep thing. The reverence is a deep thing. Reverence has to do with letting it weigh a lot to you. Letting it matter a lot to you. Most of the time, if I come to my seat before the choir is done, you will not see me drift away. Even if you ever see me with my phone, maybe I'm trying to check a scripture for what I'm going to say, but you never see me drift away or careless. It's a reverence. And I'm saying so because we, grew, we are growing up in a generation where reverence, I mean, when you were younger, and if you had parents like myself, you could not just say good morning, daddy. You have to prostrate. You could not just say good morning, dad, and just say, hey, dad, good morning, hey, dad, morning. You could not do that. I mean, some of you do greet your parents that way. And if your parents accept it, okay. You know, but reference is big. Reference is that thing that when you step into church, I am in the house of God. So, the church of God is not like the classroom. The church of God is not like some other place. I just have a lot of reverence for where I am. And let me say something to you. When you begin to think that way, you will see that the ministry of the Holy Spirit will impact you more. 
because you just chose to be more reverential. So in this scripture, God says that, hey, one, two, three days, God told them, wash your clothes. God says, take your air cut. He said, the third day, he said, the Lord will visit you. Can you imagine the requirement? He told them, go and clean your houses. He said, clean the camp. He said, clean the camp. The whole camp must be clean. He said, because the third day, the Lord will visit you. Let's read it again, verse 10. Verse 10, let's read it. And the Lord said to Moses, go on to the people and sanctify them. Today and tomorrow. He said, go and tell them. He said, sanctify them. What should they do? Let them go and wash their clothes. And all of you that serve, especially people that serve in visible department, like, you know, look at the choir today. I love the way the ladies are dressed. Just a little tweak to their clothes. They're looking wonderful. But people like, maybe, maybe people in the media team, maybe people in the venue management team, you can't just serve anyhow. Oh dear, hello. How are you? It's been a long time. I saw your wife yesterday. I guess that she's next to you. Stop running. She will tell you what I'm talking about. Praise God. So he says that, and the Lord said unto Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. So you just, just can't come to church and when you come to church, you slouch on the chair and all of those kind of things. You know, because our church is accepting. But I always tell you something. There are two things about our church. It come the way you are. That's the first step. So our church is always come and see. But after come and see, what's the next thing? Come and die. Come and die means come and die to who you are and come and live unto Christ. So Jesus Christ will say, hey, 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 come and see. And if you've been in church for a while, come and see is okay. So if you just come to church now, come and see is okay. But after come and see, it should be now what? Come and die. And you must just learn some new values, some new values. Like, I mean, like reverence. Like reverence is just a huge value. That I'm in the house of the Lord. So when, the, when you're reverence in the house of the Lord, when it's time to pray, you are not sitting down to pray. We, in this church, we stand and kneel to pray. Praise God. So when you're here, someone says, but it's tough for me. That's how you learn. That's how you learn. You know, when I went to boarding school and they taught us how to cut grass. You know how the teacher to give cut grass? They give you cutlass. And they say, start cutting. Then you don't know how to cut then you learn how to cut. Then you start having blisters. But after some years, then you know how to cut. So reverence is as simple as you come to church. You Number one, you're coming to church early. Not that you're coming to church late and you're just trolling as if God is meant to wait for you and you're not meant to wait for him. You know, you, don't, you come to church. Oh, as soon as you come to church, you settle down. You greet your friends, settle down. As you settle down, you put yourself in a state of reverence. It might be a prayer. Oh, Lord, I'm here right now. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. That there's an atmosphere within and after the service. I just want to reverence him. I just want to put my minds together. I, I want to, you know, you want to put your phone on. Don't disturb mode. You want to put this there because of reverence. And when it's time to pray, you're praying and worshiping. And when it's time to worship, you know, you know, you're worshiping. And, you know, and, and choir, let me say something to you. But you guys don't realize. A lot of you lead us powerfully on worship on the stage. But guess what we watch? We watch you when you're here, not when you're here. And we'll see how love you love to worship or you love to perform. Because when you're here, you worship. When you're there, you perform. And, and like today when I came now, I saw, what did I see? I think someone was not on the stage. Who did it? I saw someone. Uh, what's his name now? I saw Ayo. I saw Ayo just facing the AC and it was just like this, you know, and he was not on the stage and he was like this, trying to worship and you could seem like having an intense moment with God. So, you know, as I passed by and for me, I think that's what God sees. And the most powerful ministry is what you can do outside the stage and not what you can do on the stage. So, it's a reverence. So, how do you have reverence and worship? When it's time to worship, always learn to keep your hands up. The Bible says that this, our keeping our hands up, is a form of prayer and worship. You know that the Catholics do something like this. I don't know how they do it. And they claim that it's prayer. You know, biblically speaking, that's not in the Bible. 
the sign of the cross is not in the Bible. They do it and they know why they do it. And I'm not a Catholic. I can't understand that or explain it. But I want to teach you what's in the Bible. What does the Bible say? First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. And all of you that are leaders, this is how you train your people. You train your people because if people know better, they will also do what? They will do better. So if you had a department, you had a cell, you had a small group, you train them for them to be better. Hallelujah. Look at this, the, the next verse. The next verse. Yeah. Next verse. Next verse. Oh, verse 8 then. I think I've jumped. I've jumped. Let's read together. I want to go. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, doing what? Without what? It says when you come to church, leave your anger at the door and don't pick it up again. When you come to church, leave your malice at the door. When you come to church, leave your unforgiveness at the church. He says, I will therefore that men. So when people lift up their hands, maybe you came from an Anglican background. You don't know why we do that. It's not like a Pentecostal invention. It's least. He says, how do we pray? You know, he says, I will that men pray, lifting up holy hands. Without rot and doubting. Psalm says something to us. Let me show you that quickly in the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. Somebody say, reverence. Psalm 141 verse 2. I, I want to show what it means to lift up hands. What it shows to lift up hands. So we're learning new things. We're learning new behavior. Let's read together. I want to go. Let my prayer be set forth before you as what? Incense. So watch this now. When you go to the white garment churches, even the African churches, you see them carrying incense around. Yes or no? The reason why is that the incense of the Old Testament is prayers in the New Testament. So the reason why we don't use incense today is because we're doing what? The real thing. I want to ask you something. Um, if someone gives you, if you go to the bank and they give someone your check and they give you the money, when you give you the money, do you still ask for the check back? Why? Because the real value of the check is now given to you. So in the Old Testament, all they had was the check. In the New Testament, we have the cash. So in the Old Testament, they were carrying the check, waiting for a time that they will have the cash. But now in the New Testament, we have the cash. We should not be looking for the check again. So we're not looking for incense. Someone says incense, drive away evil spirit. It's only a useless, weak demon that will fly for incense. How can smell drive away spirits? Do spirits smell what we smell? That means a spirit who can smell your jollof rice. Just use your head. Just use your head. That means a spirit can smell what your jollof rice. I came from the background because for some time my parents attended the white garment, my mom attended the white garment church. So they had all manners of incense. So I understand the concept. So they, they will come and just flip through the whole place and it says it keeps evil spirits away. I'm like, it doesn't work that way. Because if evil spirits can smell incense, then they can smell jollof rice. Then they can smell ogbono soup. Then they can smell afang. So I, I think if you do that, evil spirits will hang around your chicken, your, your, your kitchen the more because they'll be like, ah, my God, this girl is a great cook. Praise God. So see what it says. It says, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. And what? And the lifting up of what? Of her hands. As what? So in the evening, the priest will come and do what I call the evening sacrifice. They will kill an animal. He says, you don't have to do that again. Every time you lift up your hands, God says, I accept it as the evening sacrifice. With your hands and thank him. Offer the evening sacrifice. Offer the evening sacrifice. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So reverence is very important. Reverence is very important. When you come to church, the way you talk, for example, reverence is just important. Even if you're angry, you are in church. Even if you're hurt, you are in church. For example, if the governor is here, if the governor comes to my house and my son does something, you know, I don't know how you are. I will never shout on my son in front of the governor. I will only look. 
and postpone the anger. The reason why is that I regard the presence of someone. Reverence is the regard of that person. So you can't just sit down and be like, ah, you know, someone come and let me go and quickly pick up the call. My friend is out and let me go. No, you can't do that. There's no reverence in all of that. Reverence the person of the Holy Spirit. For where two or three are gathered, there he is in our midst. Somebody say hallelujah. So reverence him in prayer. So when the worship leader comes up from the choir, you know, you may, you may be richer than the person. You may be more beautiful than her. But when the person comes up from the choir, you know, what do you do? I said, let's stand up together. That person is talking on the influence of the Holy Spirit because now he's on the anointed stage. Let's stand up together. I stand up. Lift up your hands. We lift up our hands. Jump on our feet. We jump on our feet. Not because of the person, because of the stage he's upon. That's reverence. And I believe as we do that more as a church, and let me say something quickly, all of our leaders, when I give a correction like this, what I expect you to do is to go into our groups and also talk about this and answer questions and explain this. And this is how you help people do better. So all of you in the media team, you know, you're carrying the cameras, carry the camera reverentially. If you're in the ushering team, when you dress as an usher, as a protocol person, as a greeter, but full of reverence. Always think about it. I'm privileged to do this. I'm not entitled. I'm privileged. Like, don't be like, ah, what is it going on? No, I'm privileged to do this. I'm not what entitled. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm privileged to do this. I'm not what entitled. All right, let's turn our Bibles quickly and we're going to read. Where do we start from? Matthew chapter 13 in verse 24. Matthew chapter 13 in verse 24. And we're just going back to the topic about, you know, I, 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 I got a testimony last two weeks. A lady was a lesbian and she began to attend our church. And she said to herself, oh, the Lord has just touched her. And she's just been healed and all of those things. Which is, which is. Praise God. Maybe before I teach today, let's take some two or three testimonies about emotional healing. You know, how people have changed, what has happened to you. We've been teaching for a while, right? Should I take two or three testimonies? All right, let's take two or three. So where, where, where's the two testimonies? Online, if you have a testimony, type in the comment section or send an email. All right, so let's go. Anybody that has a testimony? Why do you sit at the back now? Because your friend is married and she, we've exported her. Yeah, let's take two or three testimonies. Yeah. How this emotional series is affecting you, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, let's take two or three. So hands up, quickly, hands up. Remember what I said about reverence. Response. So if you have a testimony, why do you want to hold it back? No, it's just a simple thing. Why do you want to hold back your testimony? I've told you something. Give God the glory, but share the testimony. Yeah, Give, if the testimony is yours. There's someone like that. Who is, who is that? Is she the one? You're, you're, you're encouraging her. Why, why does she think you have a testimony? I'm going to come to you. Please come, my sister in red. Let, let's put our hands together for her. Come. Praise God. Yeah, I, I think maybe more of a pastor should get the microphone so they can hold it and help them share, you know, because I'm not going to pass on the microphone yet. Excellent. Excellent. Just come, just come. Just come. That's really good. That's really good. I like your red top. Praise God. Just tell me your microphone. Look at the look at the audience here. Oh wow. Good Praise evening, God. Everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Pastor V. I'm happy to see you first. I'm happy to see you. I can give you a hug if there's you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. So I would say that. So I'm Reverence not... is thinking that she's saying a testimony, not be like she's looking for attention. The reason why is that if you allow the devil to stay in your head, it will give bad meaning to everything. You're like, oh, that gets for attention. Why are you that way? You did not share. Someone stood to share. And, and the reason why is that you've trained yourself over time in a negative perspective. So you don't know how to see things from just a pure perspective. You see two people holding their hands after church. Ah, have they started dating? In fact, that is even better. This is, uh, hey, maybe they are fornicating like that. Too. Hey, so from church now to bed. Praise God. 
And let me say something quickly here. One of the most painful hurts is church hurts. And the reason why church hurts hurt really bad is that when people come to church, most people are broken. Most people have been disappointed. Most people have been betrayed. And they are hoping that they will find relationships and environment where they can open up and they can experience a lot of love, a lot of acceptance. But sometimes, because church also is full of broken people, what we do when people open up to us is that we stab them. We break them. They're already broken. The little butter is not broken. We crush it. And unfortunately for us, sometimes we don't even do a lot to hurt them. But because they have so much high expectation of us, they become shattered. And let me tell you something. If you have been shattered and hurt by church, you need to know this. That church is also made of imperfect people, including the pastors. And when you are hurt and shattered by the people that you love, always remind yourself that most of the time the hurt is not about me. It's about a pain. It's about an emotional trauma. It's about an issue they are going through. And they don't know how to respond and they turn their back on me. And the way you're going to receive healing is to always tell yourself, I came to church not because of man or pastor. I came because of Jesus Christ. I will not let man distract me from the primary reason why I came to Jesus. And let me say something that will challenge you. Remind yourself, if man will affect my relationship with God, maybe I never knew God. Maybe what I knew was man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, so I'll start by saying that the month of April has been a very intentional month for me because I have seen God try to get my attention on things that I have dismissed or turned down consciously. And then beautifully we started the series and it addressed emotional baggages that I have been carrying consciously and unconsciously. But the part I'm thankful for is one... Do you want to tell me some of those emotional baggages that you've been... Yeah, I'm just interested to know. Okay, well, so Pastor B, remember when you mentioned that um, a lot of times that we carry baggages for people and then we make decisions based on those things? Yeah, so, so, I, so that you've not experienced trauma yourself, but other people's bleeding is not making you bleed. And then I had to experience it and bled. <laughs> now you had to experience it and you bled. And how was that? I was, I was, that was painful for you, right? T tell me how painful it was. So but, but just give her the microphone, thanks. You know. I'm yeah. Shaky. yeah. Okay, so I had to. Bleed. So, how did you bleed? Okay, how, so how did someone transfer their own bleeding to you? Okay, so I was afraid of making mistakes that my parents made, and it was just in my subconscious. I don't think I have um, been able to dismiss that thought. And then I went ahead to make, in my head, decisions that my parents didn't make, and then I made them for myself, back for myself rather. And that is getting married very early. So I thought marrying early would save me the stress of experiencing all my parents um, had to go through. And then beautifully, the Lord blessed me with two daughters. And I was just carrying pain upon pain. And then in my head, I was parenting What kind of pain right. was this? First of all, I'm shaking. <laughs> I know you're shaking, but okay. you can tell me. So first of all, I'm divorced. <laughs> And I don't know. Just you know, take a deep breath. <laughs> deep breath. Do they really work? Can we? Don't worry. Just take a deep breath. I'm here. Okay. Hold on. Relax. Take a deep breath. Have you taken a deep breath? Look at me. Look at me. Take another deep breath. Take another deep breath. Breathe out. Okay. Let's share with me. I didn't think. So we're trying to tell me what the pain you went through was and how you're healing right now. So I'll just put this very practically and I'll thank God for the grace to share this. I think that I had um, a very tough time experiencing real love 
and I searched for it so deeply. Mm. And then it affected most of the relationships that I got into with men, women, friends, think about it, whatever. And then it was just from a very sincere part of me that wanted to be loved, loved. in a certain way. Right? So I would say that that pushed me into being with people that would just show you a certain form of care that looked like everything. And then now, it doesn't even make any sense because half the baggages that I was dealing with, I really didn't have to go through them. I should have just let my parents deal with their experiences. They were not married. They should have stayed unmarried. I would have made my own decisions and made better um, choices. But Pastor B, I, I don't think that I've been able to share anything that has happened to me publicly. I think I have a few people who I can even pour out to. But the truth is, Holy Spirit, help me. So, how did that, you're looking for love, lead you to more hurt? Pastor B, let's start with the male gender. You know how they'll be so sweet and nice. And then men always know when you lack attention and care. They will just come and then sweep you off your feet and form night and shining armor. And really, there's nothing there. And it's so, I don't know how they do this thing, but they've so mastered the act. And because you don't have it, when you see it, you think it is it. So, so did you have love and attention from your parents? Genuinely, no. You never did. I, I can't say I did. Yeah. I was sharing an experience um, just yesterday with my friend, and then I told her that, okay, so I, I, I skipped this. After this series on Sunday, last no, upper Sunday, the one you had, I, I think on Monday, I had a very deep prompting in my spirit to chat my father up at 3 a.m., and I go, Daddy, I miss you. This is something I will never say. I miss you. I want to talk to you. I want to feel you. I want to experience That's healing right there. And Pastor B, he replied me at 3 a.m. I hung out with my dad like on Friday and it felt so beautiful. Like, <laughs> when I, last did you hang out with your dad? I can't remember. Like, I can't really remember. But it was so That's good. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> no, but, but, but the testimony now is I had a, a very lengthy conversation with my daughters and my first daughter goes, Mommy, you are happy. And I, I didn't even say so much, but she could tell that I was happy no, and it meant it so much. Sorry, sir. I'm so sorry. You, you, know, you know, you know, wow. <laughs> Kids are very truthful. If your child says, Mom, you are happy, that means she knew when you were sad. And that means she knows you are not happy. How did you feel when you heard that? Honestly, I would say one thing. I may not be able to explain how I felt, but I know something happened. Before she said that, I was sharing with them a scripture a random lady here shared with me on Instagram, Ezekiel 36, 26. And then I laid on my bed and I said, God, do your surgery. I know that you're addressing issues that I don't know anything about, but I'm going to leave it to you to do. And then based on the encounter I had with the word, I just shared how I felt. I felt like God was working. And if I could just say that... Can I ask you a question? <laughs> yes, sir. What does it mean to grow up without love in your own experience? I wanted to, just because of, yeah, I want to, yeah. What does it mean to grow up without love? You, did you know when you were growing up that you didn't have love? Absolutely not. You didn't know? Absolutely so not. So what does it mean? Because some people are here and you say, I grew up without love. Someone says, but you had parents. How could you grow up without love? Because the danger of Bible teaching with that application is that it's empty. You, you, you hear the concept, but you don't know what it means. Yes, please. Okay, so I, I, most of the time, this question... When did you realize that I don't know what love is? When I had children. It wow. took me It took me a failed marriage of five years to realize that all these experiences was because I was looking for, I don't know if the word is acceptance or just to be sure that this person cared about me genuinely. And I told my friend, like I said, 
I can vouch my, for my parents' love anytime, any day. But there was just something missing. There was no presence. There was no communication. There so the no presence means that your parents are committed to taking care of you, but they were not connected to you emotionally. At all. At all. And I, th I think that... Because and how did you feel that? What, what did you feel that vacuum? I, I don't know. All, all along. Because I kept looking for it in people. So how are you looking for it? Okay, so it, most, most of the time, it will, it will come with me trying to talk about things that I ordinarily wouldn't be able to talk about. Mm. And then, you know how people can be, then they will impose their opinions on you or their experience. Or maybe not necessarily impose, but based on the fact that maybe they've done life and it went that way with them, they think that you should do it a certain way. Mm. And I made a lot of choices from that, um, from that line. All so when you had your two children, you couldn't love them, could you? Oh, yes, I could. So how, how did you realize that you didn't know what love was? Or you couldn't love them in a certain way? No, I could. I could love them. And this brings me to one of the reasons why I'm, testament, I'm testifying right now. I could love them. I could see me trying to do everything that my parents were not. I was trying to be present. I was trying to be very upright and just and, you know, just speak, communicate, carry them along. But there was something missing. And that's, that's what you said two Sundays ago. I think I forced them to grow in that way. I think I forced them to experience my life even without sharing so much about what I had to deal with. Mm. I, I, I found myself constantly having conversations with my first daughter, for instance, about things that she may not even be able to understand in the next 10 years. So it took me this and, experience. And how did that impact your first daughter? She's, she's so into herself, but very much in her speech. So most times when you hear her talk, you... What happens is this. When you... And I want to say this, when you have parents that don't allow their child to grow by putting emotional burdens on them very early, those child grow faster than their age. And that's what you see when she speaks. But what happens to those child if they don't have repair is that they lose their childhood. That's right, sir. So they don't know what it means to enjoy. They don't know what it means. So she, she will try to be perfect for you. Yes. Does that happen? All yeah. the time. She tries to All be perfect. The, the reason why is that she doesn't want to hurt you because she sees how much hurt you've been through. Mm -hmm. And so she tries. And how does that break you right now? When no, you think? It's not nice, Pastor B. It's not nice at all because I, I don't think I say this enough. I feel like I've stolen her childhood from her. I see the way she talks. I see the way she plays. I see her trying to be careful. I see her trying to just be right. And it kills me. I can't even pretend about it. It kills me because I feel like she should be playing. She should be talking. They're she's just five years old. She's seven and she's seven. too much. It's, it is just too much. <laughs> but you know the beautiful thing? The beautiful thing that the be everything that is broken can be fixed. And the fact that you're realizing this at seven. So you didn't realize this when you got married. Healing starts with self-awareness. And that's what has happened to her. So you, what you need to give her is this. Tell her she's a child. And she has a full permission to be a child. Spoil as a child. Make mistakes as a child. Live as a child. Are, are you proud of yourself? What is it? You I'm absolutely me. proud of myself. I, I can I can tell that I am growing. I'm the one wearing the shoes, so I know where it goes. Oh wow! Let, let, let's give the Lord a big. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. That's so good. That's so good. That's so. Can we get another st testimony? I mean, that, that filled my heart. That's filled. And this Sunday is going to be off the blast. Yeah, this Sunday, I wanted to invite someone to church, but not just invite someone to church. I want to make sure that all of your friends online, that you make a conscious effort to tell them to join. Let me get another story of someone that wants to share how this series has been a blessing. Just one more person that wants to share. Just raise up your hands and just... Oh, she's coming out already? Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, there's a lady at the back. Let me... All of you that want to share, can you stand up and we can get your testimonies and we can maybe some of you can share on Sunday. Yeah, come, come, come. Yeah, Pastor Jerry, you need to help me stand up and make sure. If you want to share, just raise up your hands. We'll get your name and your phone numbers and all of that. And, and let me tell you something. I, I want us to put our hands together and just appreciate ourselves as a church. Praise God. 
I don't know if you know this, but there are few churches in this whole world where this will be discussed. People will discuss about how to make money, how God wants to bless you, but that's why they get blessed, but they are dying inside. Because there are deep emotions there. All right, yeah, tell me. What's your name? My name is Destiny. Destiny, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. What is it? She spoke? She spoke one of the sessions. Okay, well, I, I would love to hear. Yeah, yeah, Destiny, tell me. Yeah, I'm here to testify of the goodness of God and the process of my emotional healing and how it's helping me help others in Christ. Not, I'm not trying to do it myself anymore. I'm not trying to force because I'm like my siblings, my siblings, after, after that Wednesday, I had to speak with my siblings. I called them. So give us a background. Some of us don't know okay. what happened. Oh, like. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was emotionally healed after that Wednesday that I cried because I hardly cry. I'm the kind of person I bottle things up. I have so what emotional challenges? Let, let me go back. That way. Okay. What emotional challenges did you have, and how did it impact you? Okay, I think I shared um, carrying um, baggages um, because of other people's trauma, mm. and it's my family. Yeah. My mom, my dad, and all. So when when she gave the her testimony, it's it's relating to mine. Yeah how it impacted me, how I told myself I will not make this mistake. So, so, so what emotional baggages do you carry in time So now? because of, I felt because my parents failed in this aspect, I would what go into What aspect did they, yeah, they failed? I, I don't need to know what your parents okay. failed, but how did they impact you as a person? The reason why is that I know you have a story, but you know that I know in your mind. Yeah. So if you don't tell us what it is, okay. we'll not be able to appreciate what the Lord did for you. All right. Yeah. So... In the as okay, in the aspect of you, like in showing love, yeah, um, putting blame, like you must. How will I put it? We get this. We get you know, imposing the way she was trying to tell her daughter that this are the things she didn't get. Let me right. help you frame the question. Okay, how did you how did you suffer emotional setback? That really challenged you when you were young. Yeah. How did I suffer it? Emotional, yeah. How did it affect you? It affected me um, on how I express love. Yeah. Finding love. Yeah. Because I didn't get it. I felt I did not get it the way I was supposed to get it. So you didn't you I didn't saw. experience love? Yes. So how were you able to love people? Were you able to love people or you were not able to love people? I was trying to love people with with all my strength, all my might. You were trying to trying hard. To you do it in the like since it didn't come this way. I think I could do it better, and that's what I was trying to explain. That because my because they failed in this aspect, I told myself that I would do it and I must uh, get uh, it and in did, that aspect. Did that lead to abuse on your part? Did people abuse you because yes. You were abused because yes, of that. And, and, and you'll be abused because of that because if you try to look for love desperately, that desperation can be yeah. sensed yeah. and it can lead you to abuse. Yeah. And, and people will think that there's something wrong with you, right? Yeah. Tell me one of the things you accept to you in the process. Okay, like I think I became self-defensive. Mm. Even when people are trying to tell me, D, this is not right. I became self-defensive that this is right. This is what we should we're supposed to do. Yeah. This is this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. So I became really self defense. I really wanted to protect my own standard of love. Mm. And I got it the wrong way. Wow. I got wow. it the wrong way. So what happened between that time and this time? Okay, so after service, you you made mention of something. Forgive yourself first and allow God do the healing. Forgive yourself and allow God to do the healing. So I discovered that because I wanted to do it the right way, I was carrying my siblings along. Like this is the right way we should do it. This is the way we should do it. So after service that day, I, I called them. We prayed together. After praying together, I felt joy. Mm. I felt relief. I felt peace. 
I spoke with my parents, I spoke with my mom, I spoke with my dad. They are, they are in some kind of um, situation. Uh, situation right mm. now, debt and all. I just prayed with them because I felt I could carry the burden. I could carry everybody's burden and mm. do it the way that I thought was right. So after that day, everybody found peace. My sister has had confessed that she had um, attempted suicide like twice mm -mm. because of the wrong meaning she had carried in her head. Wow. So she, she was able to open up to me and say, D, this is, this is what I've been struggling with. But after that, when I say pray, everything has... Now we just have hope in hope. Christ. Oh, wow. We just that, have hope. That, that's so good. That's so good. We'll take one more. So, uh, um, are we taking her? So, Pastor Jerry, did you get a number? Thanks, yeah, so that Sunday we can hear some of these stories. Praise God. Praise God. I'll just do this for another three minutes. Yeah. Can I help you hold your book? Don't worry, I can help us and hold your book. Good evening, church. Good evening. What's your name? I, I like your booboo. -boo. Thank you very much. First yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. I, I feel then you feel shy. Take a deep breath, then you can breathe out. My yeah. name is My name is Emiete. Oh, my other name is Eniola. Eniola, okay. I just want to thank God for the healing. Mm. I went through emotional abuse from my family. You know. When you when you were loved, when you're not loved by your family. So what? so in your family you were not loved. Yes. So. How, how did you understand? Why did you think you were not loved? It was obvious. How? Because it was it was obvious because while growing up, I saw myself serving my family like the house help of the family. G give me a, give me an example, you know, so that I can understand. Okay. We are seven in numbers, and I, I happen to be the middle child of the family. Yeah. We are, I'm the fourth born and also the fourth daughter. So while we were growing up, I used to be this kind of person that I tend to learn things first. So while I was seven, I already know what it means to do as chores. So while I was growing up, my elder sisters, whenever they are going out, they'll be like, ah, Emily, please help me cook this food. Emily, please help me do this, do that. I'll quickly assist them. Whenever they drop it in the, they'll put it in the fire. I'll just do the finishing and all that. So that was what I was doing then. So I grew up noticing that everybody has left the whole thing for me, even up to my younger sisters, my younger ones, my younger, my younger siblings. So when I was, um, so so how did you, how did this make you feel as a child? Like I thought it was normal. At first, I thought it was normal. Mm. So when I was 12, when I was 11, going to, um, to GSS 1, I noticed going to school was more of like, my mom never cared about it. Like, she never cared. But did she care for the other children? She was. I had to drop out for my younger brother to write primary six exam. It was, I dropped out from school for my elder sister to, to write her SS3 exam. You, so, like, so you were making sacrifices? I was making sacrifices for the family. How did this make you feel as a child when you grew up? How, how did I thought it was normal. I felt it was loved. But they never showed it. It was never reciprocated. So you dropped up for them and sacrificed for them, but nobody sacrificed for nobody. you? Nobody. When you think about this, how did this make you feel? I felt broken. My friends, even my friends in church were ready to even stand my mom and ask her, are you sure you're the one that gave birth to this girl? It was that bad. Like, it got to a stage whereby I can actually, I can easily walk out. I can, I can walk away from things. I don't even think back. Like, I, I got your, your message few, few, I think it was last week or so, that you said, you spoke about emotions, that yeah. you just, you like, you, 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 you just freeze and you just like, any, any little thing you're out of. You, you just check, out, you of just check out of your body. That is me. Like, that is me. Emotional freeze. You just, like, you I just don't, check out I don't really You're there physically, but you're not there emotionally. I don't really care. That, that was what actually happened to me. So that actually, like, I wanted to be loved, but I didn't get it from my family. Not even from my other sisters. How did you feel? Looking back, do you feel hunger? Do you feel pain? How do you feel? All of these things. I feel pain. I'm not talking to you. I feel yeah. pain. I feel pain. 
Like, I really feel pain. I won't lie to you. I just started talking to my mom. After can, many I years? I can stay two years and not talk to my mom. It was, it was that bad. So, like, I can stay two years without talking to my mom. And I don't care. So, what, that actually led So, me. it's something that you don't talk to your mom, but you don't even miss her. I don't. Please, can you, respect, can you respect our conversation, please? I mean, you can say something, but you need to keep it low. I, I actually, most times, I don't miss her. So, so when you look at your mom in the face, what do you see? Do you see love? Do you feel anger? Do you feel resentment? Do you feel hatred? What, or you're just blank? I am just blank. My mom stays in Aja, but I can spend 30 minutes with my mom, even in her house. That actually led me to getting married very early. So, I'm, I'm trying to draw a connection here. You know, I'm trying to draw a connection here. And um, the connection is this. Because I, I want the camera to, to, to help me project. And let me tell you something. Many of you don't know what I'm doing. But this is what I'm doing. People's story might preach a bigger message than my sermon. And that's why what I'm doing is that I'm slowing that down. I'm going through each point like my sermon. Praise God. My, my brother, I need you to help me stay so that we can, you know, you can see her very well. Because I want, I, I want, yeah, thank you. Thank you. When you think of how your family treated you, the pain, I, I wanted to use... If you meant to write a summary, how will you summarize what you felt growing up from age zero, seven, twelve, when you dropped out for your school for your brother, dropped out for school for your sister? How will you summarize it if you want to tell someone that did not know you before? Okay. From age zero to twelve, I was actually living a life where I never understood anything called love. I just felt that, okay, we are families, so there are sacrifices we need to make for families. So at that, okay, at age zero, I was just doing things free, like I was just doing things. So like, after 12, what happened? So after, after 12, 12 I got yeah. into school. So when I got into school, it happens that my dad fell sick. You know, like my dad fell sick and my mom was not the one taking care of the house. So while she was taking care of the house, I was always out. I dropped out again from that GSS. So when I dropped out, they were like, my school fees is very expensive. So- But hold on, this was the same, you, only your school fees, out of the seven of you, only yours was very expensive. Mine was very expensive because I was going to one of the biggest schools in Benin City. So it was very expensive. So I understood that fact that my dad is sick. So what happened was, I don't just know what just happened because I think I was always alone in the house. So there was this, my mom goes to church and she has these friends that takes her to church, church, church. And then they came up with this language of, uh, I'm possessed. So the possessing thing actually changed the whole narrative. So like any small thing, any small thing, any small thing. So you were like, even physically abused by yes. your mom. <laughs> so my mom bobbed my hair with seven or bottle. And it was on a Christmas watch night. So why are you laughing right now? Is, is that the way you res respond to pain? You just laugh it off? I'm just, because I'm actually healing. So I'm just trying. You know, the reason why I'm saying that sometimes when people laugh is a coping mechanism. And many of you don't, some of you <laughs> it's a coping mechanism. Sometimes people use F word. It's a coping mechanism. It's, it's a way to reflect, deflect whatever you said. They'll just use the F word. And you just be like, whatever. And they just put the F word. Well, how did that break you? It broke me because I think what I would have become, yeah, like when I was, what I would have become 20, when I, in my 20s, 
I'm just trying. To, this is the time I'm starting to climb the ladder. So, so you said because of this you got married early. Yes, I did. How? Why? Okay, what happened was. Okay. Why did you get? Why did? Why did this lead to early marriage? Okay, so what actually happened was um, when I got into school, I told my mom that I needed acceptance fee. I pay. I bought the form because I wrote a series of exams and um, a series of nursing exams. I didn't get the admission, but I passed the exam. Should I tell you what I think I feel about you? I don't know where you are, but I just feel that you have someone that is like, you're shameless. Yes. You don't care. I don't care. Why, why don't you care? Use the microphone, yeah. I, like, I just feel that the worst has happened. You know the word that they said, you can't actually shame the shameless. What? That's what I feel. You can't actually shame the shameless. Like I feel the word has happened, the worst has happened to me that... I mean, for a lady that your mother took a cell not bottle to barb your hair, that means your hair as a lady? I still have the scars on my head. So, so it, it's not just saying that I'm abused, that there are evidence of abuse on my body. So how did that... So, so I'm sure there was a time you used to cry a lot about this. Yes, I, I, I did. Then you stopped. I stopped. Why? I stopped because I was like, let the worst happen. Exactly. What, what, what would happen? Let yeah. it just happen. The first step of grief is shock. Then you process up to an extent and you'll be like, I don't care. And let me tell you something. I'm, I, I, it's in my sermon today. Sometimes when you see people that are rebellious online, that rebellion is because of a trauma that they carry. And if you, because sometimes the people that you think they are hard and rebellious are the sweetest people, the most loving people, but what has happened to them over time is that they've gone through so much abuse, they've seen so much badging and trauma, they just don't care. And that's why you must be careful of shaming people because when you shame people, they can become worse for it, not better for it. Sometimes we shame people hoping they will get better. But the truth is that sometimes when you shame people, they get worse for it. Please, let's finish this. Yeah. So, so you, you, so, so I because... Yeah, you were telling me, so, you were trying to tell me the yes, connection between so, how your parents neglected so, you and early marriage. So what actually happened was, what actually led to the marriage was, um, when I got into school, I told my mom that, okay, since my dad is sick and my dad has paid the acceptance fee, so please, I need money for school fees. And my mom was like, she does not have money for school fees. I was not like, ah, you have, must have money for school fees, so what do you want me to do? Because at the end, I had a lot of friends that, even sometimes my friends were like, they were ready to go fight for me. That was how bad it was. They were ready to go fight for me. And but I'll have to tell them, you can't because this is a family issue. Because when you fight, for, after fighting for me, I'll still go back to the same family. And the whole thing was buzzed and me. So I had to tell them to take a chill pill. So after then, I told my mom to give me money for us, um, the school fees. She said she does not have money for school fees. I said, okay, fine. So what, hap what happened was, the guy I was the, that came into my life then knew what was happening. And then my mom said, the only money she has was for my only brother. Lo and behold, I know I'm saying this in camera. My brother duped my mom that money. My brother duped my mom that money that he was supposed to be. So I dropped out from school again. Because I actually told myself that I was going to, like, literally, I, I told myself I was going to keep myself to marriage. That was what I told myself while growing up. So because I'm from a Catholic background, so I told myself that no man is going to come close to me except my husband. So immediately I met that guy. He gave me all the attention, the care I needed, I was looking for. So I didn't even look at his bad side. I didn't look at his family background. I just jumped in. So even my friends were like, I mean, are you sure? I said, How are you with your marriage right now? <laughs> I'm not in my, I'm divorced. How long did the marriage last? For three, three and a half years. Going to four years. When did the problem start? Ah, 
the problems okay what when the problem started immediately i got into the marriage that was in 2016. as soon as you got into the marriage the problem started, started. you know why you know why love is blind marriage is it? what what yeah and that's the thing most of you that date people as soon as you leave you're so focused on the bad thing you experience that you move on to the next thing and that's why I tell people the biggest gift you can give to yourself and to your future partner is for you to be healed the danger of you not being healed is that you will choose damaged people and call it love you will choose people that have emotional trauma and call it love praise God hallelujah so how are you healing right now uh, well I can actually talk to I can talk to my sisters I'm cool with them. so between that time you've spoken to your sisters yeah, like just yeah between that time I've spoken to my sisters just a few weeks ago we had family conversations I would just greet them and then apart from the whatsapp call when they are on a group call like this I'll just say hi to everybody and then I'm out so I'm just trying to blend into the whole thing let me ask you a question come close have you forgiven your mom yes I have when was that I did that last week because we had a fight a few weeks ago I want, to, I want to send it to your mom. Okay. Ask your mom, Mom, what were you going through that made you treat me this way? I'll do that. The reason why is that sometimes if you understand the perspective of your abuser, you understand the abuse. Because most abusers were just trying to protect themselves. Praise God. Thank you. So powerful, so powerful, so powerful. So powerful, so powerful, so powerful. So powerful, so powerful, so powerful. Praise God. Can you give me another 10 minutes? Is that okay? Matthew chapter 2 verse 2. I want to read this and I would I just want to say about four things and I'll close. It's already a good sermon for me, you know. The Bible says, Matthew 2 verse 2, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and are come to worship him. Some of you ask this big question. Why is it, you know, some of you ask this big question. Why is it that I'm the one that life is hard for? Why is it me that I struggle all the time? Why is it me that I have emotional pain? Why was I the one that was raped? Why was the one that was abused? Why was the one that my mom didn't care about me? Why was the one that my father disappointed me? Why was the one that they didn't care about me? And let me tell you something. That's a big question. But the reason sometimes for the trauma you went through, the pain you went through, the rejection you went through, especially when you were young, is because your enemy has seen a deposit of grace in you and it was trying to kill it. Listen to me, everybody. People only throw stones at trees with what? Fruits. If the devil did not see something, it will not attack you. Watch this now. In the Bible, two kids were attacked from birth. Who were they? No child was attacked like Jesus Christ. The Bible says all children below the age of two downward, they were all killed. You know why they were all killed? They were all killed because they were looking for the one that had the glory. It's because of the glory you have that Satan is trying to attack you. So the attack is the proof that you carry something. And I'm saying so to everyone that's been to rejection, everyone that's been to pain, everyone that's been to, you know, some kind of, you know, you know, situation where people have, you know, put self-doubt in you. The reason for the attack is something that you carry. You know why? Oh, wow. I, I, I need to slow down. It's because of something that you carry.
Why did they attack Moses? Because Satan knew Moses would bring Israel out of the land of Jordan. Out of the land of Egypt, rather. So I know that you're going through, you're asking the question, my parents didn't like me. And, and you know, because I, I kind of understood in a way what she said, just because of the background I had. I grew up in a family where I cannot say for certain I experienced God's law. I experienced parental law. You know, one, my father was, an, was a distant father. My father was never there physically. But the most painful thing was, oh wow, just sharing this. Just, you know, just sharing this is very painful. The most painful thing was when my mom looked at me. And let me tell you what I did that offended my mom. What I did was that I told my mom that I'm not going to do the business or get the job like we spoke about. That I'm going to go into ministry and become a pastor. And my mom sat me down and looked at me and said, I regret having you. He said, if I knew this was how you would turn out, I would have had that abortion. She looked at me in the eye and said, just let you know, if you think you will rely on my property before I die, I will sell everything because of you to make sure that this choice, you will suffer from it. The day I left my parents' house, I just packed my bag and moved. I didn't move to my house, so I went to Scott with a friend. But looking back, that's why I'm here. <laughs> the purpose was to kill this vision I was carrying. Because if, as my mother threatened me, <laughs> oh my God. You don't know, my mother was the Jama queen. Oh. I'm praying in the morning in my room. My mother would just come. Bang the door. Bang, 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 bang. Pray all the time. Pray all the time. Pray. He said, what is the problem? Pray all the time. Pray. He said, what is the problem? You are not prayerful. You are lazy. Just tell the truth. You are lazy. You, there's, a, there's a popular scripture. Faith without work is dead. Every day, prayer, prayer. Two hours prayer. Three hours prayer. Two hours prayer. Three hours prayer. Is that how you will feed? But why was the attack there? Because Satan saw a ministry that will go global. So before the vision could be formed, and let me tell you something, a wise man knows the best time to attack something is when it is small, not when it has grown big. Because when it has grown big, then you have conviction. So while we are in formation, the attack goes. So the reason for the pain, the reason for the rejection, from the rejection from your family, the heartbreak you've gone through, the, the rejection at work is because there's something you're carrying. Can I say something to you? A lot of you have been denied visa. Let me tell you the truth. It's not Satan again. I'm telling you, because there's something you carry you need to deliver before you go. But many of you have turned the rejection into something that is personal. In, rather than seeing God's eternal purpose. Pastor Sam was sharing a story with us. He said he was rejected, I think, UK visa twice. UK visa three or four times. US visa two or three or four times. That the one that broke him was when he was rejected, Kenyan visa. He said, and you must understand that this visa, we're doing 21 days fasting. This and this. He said, when they rejected him, he just said, uh-uh. He said, God, this is no longer Satan. Uh, because there's no demon we have not bound. And God said, stay. I will bless you here. That was the year their ministry exploded. Sometimes rejection is redirection. I'm telling you, sometimes rejection is not the way you see it. Rejection is simply redirection. But it takes a lot of wisdom and maturity to be able to accept that, hey, I'm not rejected. I'm just what? Being redirected. So what I've learned, so someone says, okay, pastor, I've been through a lot of pain. I'm breaking now. What I've learned is this. The reason why I'm attacked is because, let me tell you something. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is very powerful. Thieves don't attack places without treasure. So the reason why I'm attacked.
attacked as a child, why I've gone through pain, rejection, trauma, re you know, all of this kind of a heartbreak is because there's treasure in me that Satan is trying to steal. And I'll say, Satan, no way. Satan, no way. Now I know you. Listen to Jesus Christ. But I say, and when they saw a star, that's the only child that was born, they saw a star. Satan went for it. The reason why you're going through trauma, pain, rejection, they have seen your star. You are the, do you know the amazing thing? The child did not see the star. The parents did not see the star. But the enemy saw the star. My sister, they've seen your star. That's why they thought that if we rape her, she will lose her self-esteem and not become something in life. Tell them that despite my past, my star will still shine. They've seen your star. You know, you've been through a lot of rejection, a lot of heartbreak. Your family has pulled you away. Have you not wondered why a lot of the most effective pastors have a lot of stories? The reason why is that the stories came out of their pain. And the pain was because they saw their star early. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. I, I bought a pack of grapes. You left it in the car? Where's Shola? I, I wanted a pack of grapes and a, a bottle of wine. I think we've had a great service. Praise God. One of the things, one of, so someone says, well, I'm going through a lot of emotional pain. One of the things you must realize is this, and this is very powerful. Emotional pain and trauma has the capacity to unlock your gifts. Emotional pain and trial, emotional pain, rejections, has the capacity to unlock your gift. Sometimes when you go through those emotional heartbreaks, when you go through those rejections, when you go through those tough moments where people lie on you, where people criticize you, where people reject you, where your family doesn't care about you, sometimes those things you go through unlock your gift. You know what I believe? I believe that David wrote one of the largest collection of Psalms. But why did he write it? Because most of his life, he was locked up in the desert somewhere. If he was not in the desert, he would not be writing those Psalms. Someone in the New Testament wrote half of the New Testament, one and a half. His name is Paul. Do you know why Paul wrote? When he was in prison and he could not travel, from prison he began to write. His writing ministry came out from prison. If he was traveling, he would have not known Paul. So pain sometimes has the capacity. Yeah, yeah. It's pain. And look at these grapes. Everybody look at these grapes. Look at these grapes, everybody. This grape is nice. But which is more expensive? Grape wine or grapefruit? Which is more expensive? Grape wine. But before grapefruit can become grape wine, it has to go to what? Crushing. Your crushing is to increase your value, not destroy your value. So, when you go through the emotional pain, they are crushing you. Say, I understand what you are doing to me. I understand what you are doing to me. When someone says they abuse you sexually, it was a crush. Because there's value that should come out of you. But for the value to come out, I have to be crushed. It's good to be like this. But when it's crushed, it's messy. Have you seen crushed thing before? It's, right now, it looks portable. It looks nice. It looks sumptuous. It looks sweet. But when it's crushed, it spills everywhere. The, you know, the seed comes out. The guts come out. And when you go through pain, that's what it is. Your gut comes out. And this comes out. But you're about being crushed. But after your crushing, 
then you'll be blue. Then the real you will come out. The question is that, will you stay alive after your crushing to come out? Most people give up in their crushing moment. And that's why they don't see the finished product. Can I tell you something? I sense in my heart that you are going through a transition. You are going through a crushing. But ladies and gentlemen, don't give up in your crushing. Oh my God, I don't know if you heard me. Don't give up in your crushing. You've been through some heartbreak. Your, your parents broke your heart. Your friends disappointed you. They said nasty things about you. But don't give up in what? In your crushing. Don't give up. Oh my God. Don't give up in your crushing. Because the wine is about to come out. The wine is about to come out. Your value is about to explode. Don't give up in your crushing. In the cr Sing that song for me. You are making a in the present you are making you are I've been looking at them I said I perceive you are going to a season in the soul and I surrender you are making Can, I, can, we, can we talk tonight? And that's why the most difficult, let me tell you, the most ridiculous thing you can do is to criticize a man that's going to crush him. You know why? He will go through it and come out on the other side. And you that criticized him and looked down on him, you will look like an idiot. Because what you thought was punishment was God taking him through something. The friends of Job did not realize that Job was going through a crushing. So they began to say all manners of words to him. By the time Job got to the other side, focus the camera on me, I want you to pay attention to me now. By the time Job got to the other side, guess what happened? By the time Job got to the other side, the Bible says God told Job, pray for your friends with their stupid mouth. Be careful how you talk about people that things are not working out for. You may just be judging too early. You may just be judging too early. Be careful how you talk about people that make mistakes. You may just be talking too fast. Be careful how you talk about people that have delays. You may just be talking too early. The friends of Joseph, his brothers said to Joseph, they said, and what shall become of his dream? Because to them, they thought it was an end. But to God, it was a bend. To them, they thought it was an end, but to God, it was what? A bed. Be careful. And I'm saying it because, listen to me, and many of you are here, people are talking down on you because of a mistake you made. People are talking down on you because of where you are. People have rejected you. People don't want to associate with you. Your friends have pushed you away. Family members have denied you. You've gone through a heartbreak. But the truth is this. Be careful how you talk about those that are in that crushing moment. The reason why is that after the crushing, there will be a resurrection. And if you talk badly about them in this season, you will not look stupid in the other season because you spoke too fast. Can I say something to you? I wondered what Pharaoh's wife would have taught, what Potiphar's wife would have taught when, when Joseph became a husband's boss all she saw him was a slave because it was in his crushing season but he didn't understand that it's grape the grape had to be crushed to be turned into fine wine I'm in my crushing season be careful how you talk like me in my crushing season I don't look like my future but I still have my future in my crushing season I don't look like it but I still look like it in my crushing season I'm in pain but I still carry the gym but when I come out of this space, what you say, I will not forget. And that's why I say, be careful what you say about people in their crushing season. Praise God. As human beings, as human beings, we judge too early. You know, when I was in school, the way school was, people thought certain people would be the most successful. Where are they today? Those people you thought would be most successful are behind. You know why? Because God is a master joker card player. He knows how to arrange things in such a way that the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. Relaxer. 
relax sir it's going to work together for your good someone says i'm behind how long will it take me if you're asking yourself the question how long will it take me to catch up how long will it take me to catch up? relax because the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first hallelujah lift up your hands and thank him for his word today name we pray amen were you blessed today were you blessed today <laughs> look at your neighbor and say I'm in my crushing season be careful if you talk about me because new one is gonna come out before you look stupid I'm in my crushing season I'm in my crushing season be careful the way you talk about me <laughs> I'm Uber into church but be careful the way you talk about me I'm making mistakes, but be careful the way you talk about me. It's a it's a bend, not an end. Praise God. It's what a bend, not what an end. Praise God. <laughs> you hold your boyfriend and you're showing to us that you have a pretty wife. Be careful how you talk about me. It's a bend, not an end. You're wondering that how come I'm not posting pictures of Singapore and Philippines and Thailand. Be careful how you talk about me. It's a bend, not an end. I will enjoy my Yakoyo Amala. But very soon, I'll be eating it in Paris. Be careful because it's a bend, not God and that's why when I see you your testimony I don't get jealous because I know that I'm in my crushing season and it's a pain and it's not what my end because I'm planted I'm not buried hallelujah oh glory I'm planted I'm not what buried someone says I'm planted I'm not what buried oh if you believe shout yes praise God God bless you, you can have your seats. But you, I wanted to remind me on Sunday, I want to share a story about how I was suicidal. I'm going to share a story about how I was suicidal. And real suicide, not the kind of suicide that you believe I'm suicidal. No, no, no. Suicidal that I wrote a letter to my wife and said that this is who I owe money, this is who I don't owe money. Just, <laughs> I said, in case something happens, this is it. I like, this is it. And I was a pastor. I, I wrote a letter that this is this is it. because sometimes you think that perf pastor means perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was going to kill me was church problems, <laughs> church problems, and church people. Church people. Oh wow, they are lovely, but some people are vipers. <laughs> they smile with you, and they are vipers. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and take our Titan offerings. Can we go ahead and do that? Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and take our Titan offering. It was a good service today. I think you should tweet about it. What do you think? Tweet about it. Let's go ahead and tweet. Get, a, get out your phone. Tweet about it. Have I sent that thing to you and your sister? Make sure you remind me today. Tweet about it. I posted a video last yesterday about pornography. I don't know if you saw it. You can ignore it as if it had never had a challenge. Yeah, <laughs> that's what hypocrites do. <laughs> hypocrites. Oh, run, na, 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 na. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know what triple X is. <laughs> Let's take our Titan offerings. If you laughed, post it before I call you out. If you don't know what it means, you're righteous. If you're Googling it, it's not good for you. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we ready to give today? I just love harvesters, eh? How we can be so real, right? 
Yeah. It's a gift. Look at him as I'm proud of my church. Proud of my church. Yeah. You know, I was in Abuja the other day, just last weekend. So many tears. And I keep, everybody just soaked eyes, soaked eyes, soaked big eyes, soaked, you know. Just so many tears. If it's exciting standing on your feet as our culture is, so this is the time we ask you to give. If you want me to give a big message to make you give, you'll be disappointed because in our church we just make an announcement. The reason why is that we believe that Jesus lovers, fine boys and fine girls that love Jesus Christ, their money does not show in their Louis Vuitton bag, in their car. Their money shows in what? In the gospel. Praise God. They built their father's house. They what? They built their father's house. And because our church is passionate about helping people. So if you're tight in, stand on your feet. Let's pray. Let's pray God's blessing over you. So why do we ask you to stand when you're tight? We can release a blessing over you. So that's not just something you do. We can release a blessing over you. So if you're tight in, stand on your feet. Upstairs, downstairs, stand and let's pray. If you give me your offering, raise up, let's pray. All of you online, the same thing. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for the opportunity to give. I'm asking that your blessing will be upon everyone giving today. I'm asking that the capacity to be blessed will be expanded, to receive will be expanded. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If today happens to be your first time in Harvesters International Christian Center, will you raise up your right hand and welcome you in Jesus' name? Raise up your right hand and welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, my, thank you, my sister. Just read on oh, my brother. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let me look at anybody and say, one last day, invite someone to church. Let me look at another and say, one last day, win us all. Say this Sunday, break someone, break someone, break someone. It will be powerful. Please remember when you're bringing them, not, don't bring them to the third service, bring them to the first, second, and fourth service. Glory to God. Are we singing or closing? Uh, we're going we're gonna to sing. All right. Let's stand on our feet and sing a song. So tomorrow, next level prayer. I don't know who has not been joining, but I, I perceive a lot of you have not been joining. Hey, some of you have not been joining, not a lot of you. I can tell that it's actually a lot of you. How many of you joined this morning for next level prayers? Oh, wow, quite a good number. Yeah, maybe those that are not here did not join. Please remind them that tomorrow, today was really powerful. Did you sense it? You should go back and watch it. It was really powerful. Praise God. So share the video. Thank you. Harvest us, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Give the Lord a shout of praise. For our condition, if you must let us speak, dry bones come alive. Never situation, for our condition, if you must let us speak, dry bones come alive. Say you must let us be told. Never see the way show. You must let us be told. Try more.
Tell your neighbor what a night. Are you going to be here on Sunday? Will you be here on Sunday? Are you going to invite your friends and families? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just before we go, our next level prayer continues tomorrow at 6.30 with Pastor Bolaji in all our social media platforms. If you haven't been joining, please, you want to join us tomorrow morning. It's always, always powerful. The testimonies have been mind-blowing. So you want to join us tomorrow by 6.30. And this Sunday, we continue on this series of emotional trauma. It's going to be really powerful. So you want to do a favor, invite your friends, invite your family member. The best gift you can give to somebody in this season is to bring them to church. You can see tonight was phenomenal, right? Awesome. So do we have an agreement that you're going to drag somebody to church on Sunday? Hallelujah. Can we declare that surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us the days of our lives and we are the dwelling house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and enjoy the rest of your evening.